Okay, so let's talk about electrons. We're going to focus on two particular measurables of electrons. These are properties that we can measure. Instead of worrying about the actual names of these properties and the values that they can have, for simplicity, we're just going to refer to them as the hardness and the color. These properties are going to be binary properties, meaning when we measure them, they can only be one thing or the other. So when we measure the hardness of an electron, it has to be hard or soft. And when we measure the color of an electron, it has to be black or white. So it's possible then to construct a device that can measure these properties. In this case, we have a hardness detector. And in this case, we have a color detector. So our hardness detector is sort of like a sorting device. We take a random stream of electrons and input it. And then all of the electrons that are soft come out the bottom port. And all of the electrons that are hard come out the hard port. And the same can be said for our color detector. We input electrons, the white ones come out the white output, the black ones come out the black output. And when we actually run this experiment, what we find is that 50% of the electrons are white and come out the white output, and 50% of the electrons are black and come out the black output. The same is true when we detect the hardness. 50% of the electrons are found to be hard, and 50% of the electrons are found to be soft. It's also important to note that there's lots of different ways we can construct the inside of our devices, but for our purposes it really doesn't matter. And in fact, what we find is, regardless of how the actual internal portion of the detectors work, the results are always the same. It's also very important to note that these results are repeatable. Meaning if we take a stream of electrons and input them into the hardness detector, and then take only the electrons that are found to be hard and input them into another hardness detector, then 100% of those electrons will be found to be hard. Likewise, if we input a stream of electrons into the color detector, and we take only the electrons that are found to be black and input them into another color detector, 100% of those electrons will be found to be black. So we might ask ourselves if there's any sort of correlation, meaning if we take an electron and run it through a hardness detector and it's found to be hard, does that give us any information about what color that electron might be? And actually what we find is that there is no correlation. If we take a stream of electrons out of a hardness detector that are found to be hard and then measure those same electrons with a color detector, we find that 50% of those are black and 50% of those are white. Likewise, if we take a stream of electrons from a color detector that are found to be black and run those into a hardness detector, we again find that 50% of them are hard and 50% of them are soft. So if we take a stream of electrons and run them into a hardness detector, and then we take only the electrons that are found to be hard and run them into a color detector. If we looked at the output of, say, the white port on the color detector, is it fair for us to say that these electrons are both hard and white? Eh, no, we absolutely cannot. And this is one of the places where we see some of the strangeness that occurs in the quantum world. We already said that once an electron is found to be hard or soft, or once an electron is found to be black or white, that we can measure that over and over and over again, and it'll always be found to be the same. So it's only logical for us to assume if we took the hard output of a hardness detector, ran those electrons into a color detector, and then chose one of the ports, say black in this instance, to run into another hardness detector, that 100% of those electrons would come out of the hard port. But in fact, what we find is that now 50% of the electrons are found to be hard, and 50% of the electrons are found to be soft. And in fact, we can reverse this the other way and start out with a color detector, which is fed into a hardness detector, and then back into a color detector, and we still find that 50% of them will be black, and 50% of them will be white, despite the fact that the input that we used out of the first color detector was only one color. 
So one conclusion we might draw from this is that when we measure one of the properties, let's say color, we're actually disturbing or changing the other property, in this case hardness. Fortunately for us, physicists were able to figure out a way that we could test for this. So suppose we started out with a color detector, the same as we've been using in all of our other experiments. If we placed a bunch of mirrors that would bounce the electrons coming out of the black output port of the first color detector, and eventually had it go into the input of a second color detector, we would find that 100% of the electrons coming out of that detector would be black. In other words, the mirrors will change the direction of the electron, but it won't change the color. Likewise, if we had used hardness detectors, the mirrors would change the direction, but not the hardness of the electron. So suppose again we start with a single color detector, and this time we place two mirrors, one on the white output and one on the black output. These mirrors are set up in such a way that any of the electrons found to be white will follow the orange path, and any of the electrons found to be black will follow the yellow path. Where these two paths intersect, we'll place another mirror. This one's a special type of mirror that regardless of which path an electron would be following, it will always get routed out the same direction, the output of that mirror. Now suppose that we only input hard electrons into this device. On the output, we place another hardness detector. Now as we've seen from the previous experiment, whenever we measure the hardness and then measure the color and then measure the hardness again, we have a 50% distribution. And in that experiment, we surmise that perhaps the act of measuring the color was what was changing or disrupting the hardness of the electron. So naturally we would assume the exact same thing would happen here. By measuring for color between the two hardness detectors, we're actually somehow disturbing the hardness and we'd expect to see a 50% distribution between hard and soft. But as we find is very, very common in quantum mechanics, our assumption is once again incorrect. And in fact, what we find is that 100% of the electrons going into the second hardness detector are found to be hard. Suppose we placed a barrier. In this case, it's in the white path. As soon as we do that, we see that instead of getting 100% of the output being hard, we are now back to having 50% hard and 50% soft. Likewise, if we place a barrier in the black path, we once again get 50% hard and 50% soft. But as soon as we take the barriers out, we once again have 100% hard. Wait, what just happened here? What's different? If an electron was following, say, the black path, and the white path was blocked, how could it possibly know that the black path was blocked when that's not the path it's taking? Think about this. Suppose we took a single electron, which came out of the hard detector, as a hard electron. It then went into the color detector, and in this case it was determined to be a white electron. So it follows the orange path. But yet, if we repeat this with a single electron enough times, we see that those single electrons are still coming out 50% hard and 50% soft, even if they never take the black path. But how is that possible? How can the electron possibly know, unless it takes the path that is blocked, that the opposite path, the path that it would never take, is blocked? It can't possibly know this. Not that electrons know anything to begin with, but even if they could, it couldn't know. So what's the difference? What is the difference between having the barrier up and not having the barrier in? What's different is our knowledge about the system. If we were to place a barrier in the black path of our device, then we would know that all of the electrons coming out of it were white. In that case, now that we know that the electrons are white, we can't possibly know whether they're hard or soft. 
By removing the barriers, we no longer know whether an electron coming out of the device is black or white. We've erased our knowledge of which path it took. And in doing so, we've allowed the measurement of its hardness to persist. But the moment we put a barrier back in, we can infer what color an electron coming out of the device is. And in doing so, we reset our knowledge about what the hardness of that electron is. So let's take a minute to just think about how bizarre that really is. Suppose you're in a thrift shop and you see a pair of shoes. You pick them up and the first thing you notice is the color. You see that they're brown. You can show them to me, you can show them to a friend, you can show them to whoever and they'll tell you, yeah, those shoes are brown. What you don't know is what size those shoes are. So you decide to take a look. But the moment you look inside and see that they're size 11, you no longer know what color they are. Even though just a few moments ago you know that they were brown, now they could be any color. So you look again. This time they happen to be red. But now you no longer know what size they are. They might be a size 9 now. And you can continue doing this flip-flopping back and forth. Whenever you look and see what the size of the shoes are, you no longer know the color. The moment you look and see what color they are, you no longer know the size. And yet that's exactly what's happening in the quantum world. It's exactly what we're seeing in our experiments. The moment that we know what the color of an electron is, we no longer know its hardness. But the moment we know its hardness, we no longer know its color. But if we measure the hardness, as long as we don't know its color, we will continue to know its hardness. How bizarre is that?